What's up, nerds and nerdettes and wee little nerdlings all? To our body, Big John and G, the Two Gun Pixie presents Legendary Gaming! <laughs> Alright, everyone, thank you for uh, stopping by today. We have another Tabletop Takeout Tuesday here for you, my friends. And this is, uh, this is a game that, that has surprised me. I, not that I didn't think it would ever make a Tabletop Takeout Tuesday, but just surprised me how fast it made it to the list. And uh, it's not just not just what I thought about it. You saw what the 20 Sided Warriors saw about thought about it, saw about it, saw about it. <laughs> you saw what the 20 Sided Warriors heard about it. You heard what the 20 Sided Warriors thought about it. Wow, it's late. <laughs> and uh, they're part of the reason why it got pushed up till today. So uh, with no further ado, my friends, I will see you down at the table and we will talk about crypts. Ooh, thank you very much for joining me down here on the table for our Table Top Takeout Tuesday. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as I uh, as I said in yesterday's midday monologue, this this game kind of got bumped up. Uh, I, I didn't foresee it hitting this fast, but it did, and uh, that really came about after after this past weekend of some gaming with the Twenty Sided Warriors. And that game, my friends, I rode to Infamy Games, Crypt. Yeah, so this. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The main reason I got this on Kickstarter was that I saw that it was a uh, solo game and a, uh, as well as a one to four player, a two to four player game, uh, but it also handled a, a, a solo game, a solitary mode that it had. I was like, all right, something else for Friday Night Fillers. When uh, no one's around, I got to do a solo showdown. Also, it was nine bucks. <laughs> Those are the two reasons I got it. After I finally got here. Got it down to the table, played solo, played two players, played three players. Yeah, this game was worth it. All right, all right, all right. So the idea behind Crypt is that you are the heir to the throne and your father, the king, has just died. And he's taken your inheritance and had it buried with him. Cheap. Bum. <laughs> So you decide that you're going to go, uh, well, not you, I mean, you're like royalty, man. Your servants are going to go raid your father's tomb and steal as much of your inheritance back for you as they can. Problem is, your other relatives, who also got stiffed by the stiff, they've all had the same idea. So the game is uh, you sending your servants in to try to steal stuff and get your hands on it instead of your relatives getting it. Heck with them. It's your inheritance. <laughs> so you do this. The game looks like a dice set collection game. It's not. It's not. And that's good and bad. I mean, there's a lot of dice set collection games that seem to have been coming out the last year and a half, two years, I guess, right now. I don't mind. I like dice set collection games. But this is not one no, you use your dice as your servants, and uh, you're, you're bidding. You're bidding. That's what it is. It's a bidding game. And you're bidding one, two, or three of your servants on one, two, or three. Or I guess I should say you're bidding one, two, or three of your servants on three, two, or one of the artifacts that your father has uh, tried to take with him to the grave. Literally. And other servants can bid higher than you and bump you out. And you, by the end of it, you get whatever your servants are on. Whatever you were trying to get, as long as you didn't get bumped off, you get it. Problem is, the amount of energy and effort that your servants put into it can exhaust them. If they get exhausted, you can't use them again until you spend an entire round doing nothing but getting them back. You basically skip a turn, is what you're doing. And you skip that turn to get your all, all your servants back. And uh, then the turn after that, you get to go again. 
And this causes a lot of strategy in the game. How many servants you have, how many you're willing to use until you recover your full lot, how you want to place them in your bidding, where you think other people are going to try to take them, because all the artifacts are broken out into groups, and there are collectors for each set of the six groups. So by making certain collections, you're going to get certain bonuses. So you have a pretty good idea sometimes what the other players are trying to grab. So it becomes a strategy game of how much you're willing to bet, as opposed to how much you're willing to gamble that you will roll that number. Because if you take the six-sided die, which represents your servant, and you put it down on a crown on the number five, then after you claim it, you have to roll the die, and you have to get a, you have to get you have to meet or beat. So I'd have to get a five or a six, and if I don't, that servant is exhausted. So there's this whole the, the whole strategy in the game. The game is so simple, so very simple. It falls into a gateway game, I think. But yet the strategy, the strategy is going to get you really thinking. It's going to get you. Uh, it's going to it's going to bring you down this whole rabbit hole of if I do this and they do that. And I mean, you could really spend a, a lot of time doing nothing but analyzing. But that's not where the fun in this game comes. The fun in this game comes from the take that aspect of knocking the other players off, as well as the push your luck aspect when you have to roll to see if your servants are exhausted. So it's a great mix. You have bidding system. You, you, you have take that. You have push your luck. All mixed into a great strategy game. I think this game is definitely worth checking out. The 20-sided warriors do also. Uh, in fact, uh, oh, I got some notes here. Hold on a second. Uh, this is, uh, this is, yeah, so just last night. That was yesterday it dropped. Oh, I got so much stuff, I got to keep a list. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was last night. You, you saw the 20-sided warriors talk about it. So you know, you know I ain't BSing you. So that's why this game got pushed up. I was kind of hoping to maybe get some more games or whatever. But, you know, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to work out, but this isn't bad. This isn't bad, this isn't good, this is the way the dice have rolled. Quite literally, my friends, that's how the dice have rolled. So, Crypt by Road to Infamy Games. If you missed this on the Kickstarter, I'm sorry you did. You need to check this game out, you need to play this game. And if you like quick filler games, gateway games, family games, medieval setting games. Even if you play a solo mode, you're playing against the ghost of your father so you can fit it into a fantasy genre. If you like any of these, yeah, you need to play this game. And if you're a game collector, yeah, this deserves a spot on your shelf. All right, everyone, thank you so much for checking out Tabletop Takeout Tuesday. Thank you for also checking us out on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. We're very cool of you. Thank you. Also, for everyone that's gone over to a Zazzle store and checked that out, big thank you to you all. Thank you. We uh, actually had a bigger uh, Christmas end of year sale than we've had in the last two, three years or whatever Zazzle's been up. <laughs> Turns out all I had to do was advertise it. <laughs> all right, and uh, of course, the biggest thank you for subscribing to us right here, right here on YouTube. Thank you so much for commenting, for liking, and of course, as I always say, because it's the truest of truths, Thank you, my friends, for sharing our videos. I'm your buddy, Big Johnny G, with Two Gun Pixie Presents Legendary Gaming. And my friends, I am out of here. <laughs>